morning, everyone. My name is Iman. I'm a first year surgical, uh, uh, general surgery resident. Today, I will be talking about the surgical approach to gastroesophageal junction malignancy. Okay, so gastroesophageal junction cancer is a solid tumor entity that's been in rapidly increasing in incidence during recent decades. It is anatomically associated with both esophageal cancer and gastric cancer, but its increasing uh, incidence means that it must be recognized as a distinct tumor entity with its own risk factors and its own genetic configuration. This anatomically challenging malignancy requires its proper classification in order to assess the most effective surgical treatment. Now, as mentioned by Dr. Laiz, um, the most commonly used classification is the AEG classification introduced by Seward et al. in Germany. Uh, AEG type 1 represents a tumor centered in projection on the distal esophagus within 1 to 5 centimeters orally of the anatomical cardia. AEG type 3 is located, uh, infiltrates the junction from below and it is located within 2 to 5 centimeters aborally from the anatomical cardia. And AEG type 2, uh, described as the true junctional cancer, is where the epicenter of the tumor is located in projection to the anatomical cardia at plus 1 to minus 2 centimeters. This classification is the one that is most commonly used by surgeons when deciding on the surgical approach for gastroesophageal cancer. Now, even before evidence was found in clinical trials, esophagectomy was suggested as an appropriate approach for AEG type 1. The first The first landmark trial that is still used to justify this approach is the Dutch trial published in 2002, which compared the outcomes for transhiatal and transthoracic esophagectomies for patients with type 1 cancer and found a trend towards better outcomes in the transthoracic approach. Now, after becoming the standard surgical approach, efforts were made to develop safety strategies in order to prevent high morbidity after this radical procedure. This is where the randomized controlled French multicenter study uh, came in, and it was able to show benefits of the hybrid esophagectomy. What do you mean by hybrid? Meaning laparoscopic gastric mobilization and an open transthoracic esophagectomy. Uh, this was shown to have benefits over the open approach in terms of morbidity. Now, additionally, large Western national Dutch and international cohorts evaluated the short-term outcomes of hybrid versus total minimally invasive esophagectomies, and it indicated that the total minimally invasive approach might still be associated with a higher rate of anastomotic leaks. So right now, the standard approach that we have in type 1 gastroesophageal cancer is a hybrid esophagectomy. So here we have the esophagus, the gastroesophageal junction, and the stomach. Type 1 tumors, as we said, are located in the distal esophagus with lymph node metastases from this tumor uh, occurring along the esophagus on either side. And the lymphatic blood flow is not only oral, but it's also aboral. So it can be infiltrated along the lesser curvature as well as among the common hepatic and the splenic arteries. So our resection needs to include the tumor and the lymph nodes. The first part is done laparoscopically with three 5 millimeter trocars and two 10 millimeter trocars where the stomach is completely freed from its attachment. And the second part is the th thoracic part. Here the right lung is deflated, the musculature around the ribs is incised, and the esophagus is removed unblock with the surrounding lymph nodes up to the upper thoracic part. Here, the freed and prepared stomach is pulled up through the hiatus of the diaphragm, and a gastric conduit of about five centimeters is created by resecting the upper and right lateral part of the stomach, meaning about one third of the stomach is resected. This conduit is connected to the remaining esophagus with a circular anastomosis of nearly three centimeters in the diameter. Now, in most cases, AEG type three cancer is surgically treated as a gastric cancer, which means a total gastrectomy is performed. We go for gastrectomy rather than an esophagectomy in type 3 cancers because the esophagus is usually not infiltrated by the tumor, which means that we can safely perform an R0 resection by a total gastrectomy. Now here there is some discussion on the role of mediastinal lymph node dissection since Seward et al. reported that AEG type 3 has 9% paraesophageal lymph node metastasis, so a transhiatal extension of a total gastrectomy uh, was reasonable here. Now when it comes to comparing an open approach versus a laparoscopic approach versus a robotic approach, here we have a lack in studies needing more, uh, more data, more investigation. Now the most discussed type of esophageal uh, junction tumors uh, in terms of surgery is the AEG type 2 cancer or a true junctional cancer. 
Technically, these cancers can be resected by a gastrectomy with a transhiatal extension and a distal esophageal resection, or by an esophagectomy with combined resection of the cardia and proximal stomach. Now, the Seward classification we discussed refers to the center of the tumor. It does not exactly describe the proximal and the distal extent of the carcinoma. In practice, the center of the tumor is less important than the oral extent of esophageal infiltration. This criteria, the esophageal infiltration, is decisive for an appropriate exposure, a complete tumor resection, and an adequate a safety margin in an abdominal transhiatal approach. So to plan our surgical approach, it is important for us to define the aims of resection and the aims of reconstruction. We aim for an R0 resection, so a resection of the carcinoma without a residual tumor and a tumor-free proximal, distal, and circumferential margin. We aim to avoid unnecessary removal of esophageal or gastric length. We want an appropriate lymphadenectomy in the mediastinum and the upper abdomen. And we want a minimally invasive technique as much as available considering patient safety aspects. When it comes to our reconstruction, we need to have a standardized safe anastomosis and a conduit formation that minimizes reflux, preserves our reservoir, facilitates emptying, and considers long-term quality of life issues. So for advanced type 2 AEG, two main surgical procedures are competing here. Both can often lead to an R0 resection. The first is a transthoracic unblock esophagectomy, either open or minimally invasive, with a radical mediastinal unblock lymphadenectomy after a laparoscopic gastrolysis and a suprapancreatic lymphadenectomy, followed by a high intrathoracic esophagogastrostomy. The second approach we have is an abdominal transhiatal total gastrectomy, usually open with a distal esophageal resection, a D2 lymphadenectomy, and a lymphadenectomy of the lower mediastinum and a reconstruction with an end to side esophagogastrostomy with a root and Y in the lower mediastinum. So probably the most important issue we have to discuss here is the extent of esophageal infiltration, as we said, of the type 2 carcinoma. Um, now here, sorry. Uh, the transhiatal exposure, uh, the transhiatal approach makes it difficult for us to achieve esophageal safety margins. It implies consequences for the achievable esophageal safety margin and the construction of a safe esophagogenostomy. The oral safety margin of the esophagus should be at least two centimeters on the extended fresh specimen. If it is less, the prognosis is significantly impaired according to data of Minetal. Therefore, if a transhiatal resection of AEG type 2 is planned, it is recommended first to prepare the distal esophagus with an appropriate safety margin, perform a frozen section after the esophageal transaction. If the frozen section is tumor-free and enough length, uh, and we have enough length for a tension-free root and Y loop, then we can go for a gastrectomy. If the esophageal safety margin is too short or the resection margin is infiltrated, then we go for an esophagectomy with a proximal gastric resection and a reconstruction by a slim gastric conduit. So the optimal extent of our lymphadenectomy for sewer type 2 cancers is not yet defined. In terms of abdominal lymph node dissection, gastrectomy represents a more radical approach. And in terms of mediastinal lymph node dissection, a transthoracic esophagectomy offers a more radical approach. Several Western studies have presented numbers and proportions of infiltrated mediastinal lymph nodes in AEG type 2 cancers. The largest cohort uh, of Rudiger Seward et al. with more than 1,000 patients uh, presented a lower mediastinal lymph node metastasis rate of 15% uh, and 16% at the greater curvature. Based on these data, a transhiatal extended gastrectomy has been suggested for AEG type 2. Another study by Larut et al. noted a significant rate of lymph node metastases in the neck and the cervicothoracic region of 17%. Uh, a recent Asian study that has affected this discussion in Western countries was done in 2017, which published data on lymph node metastases on patients with uh, AEG type 2 cancer, including those with squamous cell carcinoma. It was initiated by the Japanese Gastric Cancer Association and the Japanese Esophageal Society. This study included 2,807 patients, and it calculated the lymph node metastatic risk for each lymph node station and region. Its data showed that the most frequently infiltrated lymph node station in the lower mediastinum is number 110 with only 5.1%. And it showed that the same group of patients had a lymph node metastasis rate at the lesser curvature of 34%. 
this study inclu uh, included only tumors with a di diameter smaller than four centimeters. So this data reflects the probability of a mediastinal lymph node metastasis as most probably associated with an advanced disease stage rather than with the overall lymph node status. And it can also help us explain uh, the different treatment strategies when it comes to differentiating between Western countries and the Eastern countries. Now, to gain more evidence for patient survival, a clinical trial for patients with AEG type 2 cancer randomized to esophagectomy with cardia and proximal stomach resection or to gastrectomy with transhiatal resection is currently planned for publication in Germany. This trial, defining overall survival as the primary endpoint, aims to answer the question of the oncologic accuracy of both approaches. When it comes to surgical radicality for each approach, German guidelines recommend a D2 lymph node dissection and a lower mediastinal lymph node dissection when a gastrectomy is applied to gastroesophageal cancer and a two-field lymphadenectomy for the, uh, for the esophagectomy approach in which a partial D1 and a D2 lymphadenectomy and a lower and middle mediastinal lymphadenectomy is routinely included. So to sum up our key points, current surgical management of gastroesophageal cancer in Western countries is based on the Seward AEG classification, a transthoracic esophagectomy with a proximal gastric resection and a reconstruction with a gastric pull-up is the treatment of choice when it comes to AEG type 1, and a transhiatal extended gastre uh, gastrectomy with a distal esophageal resection and a reconstruction by a Roux and Y esophagojejunostomy uh, is favored for a type 3. With respect to the surgical approach for AEG cancers, uh, the primary question is the best treatment for uh, AEG type 2. Uh, now, gastroesophageal junction cancers directly located in the junction, so AEG type 2, are still controversially discussed uh, in regard to the optimal surgical approach. As the incidence of this tumor is, uh, uh, is rising, there is a future need of worldwide cooperation considering the classification and the surgical therapy for gastroesophageal junction cancers. Thank you very much.